Hey, I'm Paul Rabelais, estate planning attorney, and in this video, we're gonna talk about pet trusts or animal trusts. I'm laying down here on the floor next to Chloe. Chloe is one of my two beagles. In fact, Chloe's sad right now because her brother Max just went left to go to the vet, and these dogs are inseparable. So her brother and my wife aren't here, and so I can tell she looks sad. But nonetheless, um, I got down on the floor just to give it the full effect of the pet trust video. So let me, let me just kind of set the record straight on this stuff. I, I have two dogs and I am not making a pet trust for my dogs. They're beagles, they, they get good enough treatment, they're spoiled, but, and, I, and like I said, I'm not making a pet trust for them. For them. But I, I get the whole pet trust thing, so we're gonna go over it. So if it's something that you need or want, you'll have the information um, to take care of business. All right, so um, I'm in Louisiana. In Louisiana, in our trust code, we have these pet trust or animal trust provisions. I'm gonna call it pet trust, even though the statute refers to animal trusts. And ours was enacted back in 2015. I think we were one of the last states to enact um, these animal trust provisions. And, and here's how they work. And so um, if I were to set up a pet trust, which I'm not, I would designate um, in that trust both a caregiver who would have custody and be responsible for the care of the animals, and I would designate a trustee who would be you know, responsible for managing the money in the trust, and if I didn't designate a caregiver, the trustee could designate a caregiver, and the trustee, his or herself, oh, could be a caregiver. Great, Chloe just walked off. Nonetheless, I'm gonna finish the video. And in that will or trust, um, you would designate how much you would leave upon your death to that trust. And in the occasions where people in our office do that, they often designate maybe $10,000 or $5,000 or $25,000. And I recently handled one about a month ago where a gentleman left $100,000 to his dog. So, um, now, when somebody sets up an animal trust or a pet trust, they designate when that trust terminates, and it's typically when the animals die, and then they designate who would receive the remaining trust assets once the animals passed away. It might be the trustee, it might be all of the children of the person who set it up, or it might be to a charity, animal shelter, whatever, whatever um, the person wants to do but that's designated in the trust instrument. It's, it's a little um, odd that in the comments to the statutes in our trust code, it actually says that it's enough to create a pet trust by stating in someone's will, I leave $10,000 to my dog, that's enough. But I find that's really not enough because then it doesn't, that doesn't designate who a trustee is or a caregiver or who are beneficiaries, although that would be the person's heirs. So that's probably not enough. Okay, so bottom line, who who are these? Oh, and Chloe came back. Let's see if we can get her. There she is. All right, so who does these pet trusts? Well, I think these pet trusts really are for, for people who really want to make sure that their pets are adequately provided for after they're gone. And I get that. I mean, our dogs are like our kids. Um, but also I think you have to go through or more inclined to go through the formality of setting up a pet trust if there is the potential for conflict among, Chloe's leaving again, among the heirs. She moved again, I'm gonna move with her. Oh, she laid down, forget it. Okay, so um, here's the deal. If you have heirs, and let's say you have two kids, and you have pets that are just kind of over the top, you wanna to make sure they're provided for, and the two kids don't get along too well. Um, in fact, one of the kids is pretty much a jerk and you don't have a pet trust, and you just state, you know, when you die, you leave your estate to your children equally. Well, what's gonna happen is, is the jerk's gonna be a jerk, and the nice one, who also really likes your pets, 
is going to take the pets and is going to have to use their own half of the inheritance or the estate to do all the vet, vet bills, the feedings and all, you know, blah, 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 whatever that pet might need. And so in that set of circumstance, you know, the, the jerk child, and I know jerk's a strong term in some cases, but the jerk child, um, they're going to come out financially ahead because they were a jerk. Whereas if the kids get along great and they both, you know, agree to pony up some money after you pass away, then it's less likely that a pet trust is needed. So hope you get the point there. Um, I have always said to myself, I'm never going to really write a lot and make a lot of videos about pet trust because just in my view, look at that. Pet trusts are kind of over the top. You can accomplish what you're trying to accomplish without needing to make a pet trust. So um, hope that helps. Enough about pet trusts. I'm going to get up off the floor, go make sure Chloe's okay, finish making my video, post it on YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw out of Chloe or me. And oh yeah, uh, go check out the community tab um, on my YouTube channel. It's something I just started contributing to. I have a picture of both Max and Chloe in front of the Christmas tree, and you're going to want to definitely want to make sure you give that one the thumbs up. And then I've got a little poll on there so you can indicate, you know, where you're watching this from. All right, y'all have a great day. See you later.